Good morning, everyone, uh, and welcome to our discussion today. And good morning or good afternoon, probably to most of you, actually. Um, welcome to our discussion today around next gen compliance. Myself and my colleague Mark are going to be focusing on connected data and integrated dashboards. And we're going to step through uh, a few of the areas um, around real life scenarios, um, some of the areas in which regulators focus on. Uh, by way of background, my name is Pat Conroy. I'm a managing director at ACA Compliance Group and am responsible for leading our global efforts from a business development and a client development perspective. I'm joined by my colleague, Mark Salter, who is a director of business development and responsible for all of our rec regulatory technology engagements across Europe and Asia. We're delighted to be here with you today. We think this will be a pretty insightful session. We're gonna step through a couple different areas, one being peer analysis, you know, where we are today, you know, the current ecosystem um, as it pertains to data governance, how firms are wrestling with some of these challenges, uh, how regulators are looking at some of those areas and what some of our peers from a client perspective that we've partnered with are doing. Uh, we're also then gonna talk through the impact of technology on compliance, obviously that transformation effort into a digital structure and an electronic communication um, dissemination process for our clients and really look at the intersections of that and how things get intertwined uh, for clients and, and firms to really create an efficient and scalable compliance program um, that's future proof for the next generation of the compliance landscape that continuously is shifting, um, but obviously uh, circa of the relative elements that kind of are really mustering us today um, with respect to a global pandemic that all of us are going through and hence not talking um, live in person. From there, we'll get into some of the areas of siloed risk and we're gonna spend a little bit of time on you know, what the future really looks like, uh, whether it be leveraging emerging technology or, or different use cases and applicability uh, within this concept. Uh, so with that said, we're, we're, um, we're really excited to, to step through this with you today. Um, please feel free to throw out any questions. Mark and I will do our best to, to address them during the presentation, but if not, we'll spend some time at the end um, tackling all those questions uh, the best we can. Um, if we're not able to get to them uh, throughout the session today, um, please feel free to reach out to us at the booth and we'll be able to kind of pick those back up um, from that perspective. So with that said, I'm gonna hand it over to Mark to kind of step through uh, our first area of focus, which is peer analysis. Good afternoon, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us. Thanks, Pat. Um, so to really kick this off, you know, I wanna provide some kind of background to where we are. Obviously, the compliance function has been evolving over the last few years, and compliance is now seen as becoming a strategic advisor within the business units and within some firms, almost a, a source of competitive advantage. Um, firms have increasingly been deploying technology and various data analytic tools across their organization um, with the aim of preempting any compliance issues or identifying any risks or potential hotspots within the organization. Now, that said, obviously, each firm is different and their compliance programs have been maturing at different speeds um, across also different industries. So um, we've got some data points here from a recent survey that we conducted. And it's quite interesting to see that over 67% of firms are currently using an automated or electronic compliance system. 34% of firms actually polled are allocating 20% um, of their compliance budget towards technology um, and then really even you know in to really say wherever all the firms are going 56 percent of those firms actually intend to increase the amount of um, budget spent on an automated or an electronic compliance system um, across the bottom we've got some various areas that obviously technology is currently being used personal dealing code of conduct. Um, everyone's aware of surveillance, which has obviously been in the press quite a lot recently. Technology is being used to monitor uh, gifts and entertainment, obviously in the United States, political contributions. Um, so what next? Firms have, you know, started their compliance processes and their projects, but where, where to now? And the big challenge will be integrating all of those systems into one. So 
the regulators have always seemed to be one step ahead of the industry. And we've got another acronym to throw out there, obviously, subtech. So what is supervisory technology? That's the use of innovative technologies by supervisory agencies um, to aid their supervision capabilities. And really, that really boils down to two main use cases, obviously data collection and then data analytics. And a number of those organizations have set up dedicated strategies and units to really spearhead the use of technology. Over at the FCA, they've obviously assigned a director of innovation. Um, they lead the GFIN, so the Global Financial Innovation Network, which is a group of 60 organizations really committed to financial innovation as long as, you know, with the interest of the underlying customers at its core. Um, we've all seen MIFID II come into play here in Europe over the last few years, and the Digital Regulatory Reporting Program is really an initiative to make re reg reporting efficient and effective and improving the, you know, the number of reports that the regulators receive on an annual basis. The SEC have been very vocal over the last few years uh, in their use of big data and advanced analytics. Obviously, people in the US are aware, but it, it us in Europe are also hearing more about the SEC's use of their NEAT tool um, for trade surveillance and their Artemis tool for enforcement. So subtech can really, or subtech usage can really be seen as having turned the compliance monitoring process from a backward looking um, process into a predictive and proactive process now. Now, that's great for the regulators, but what does it mean for you and I at home and the organizations on the other side? The use of technology, you know, is seen as the first step. Now, the big challenge and what we're really here to focus on today is how you bring all of those, um, I say, silo technologies into play and connect the dots, really. So being able to connect various databases um, will help you identify higher risks or potential um, issues within your organization. The ability to spot you know the needle in the haystack and identify various patterns amongst all the data points within your organization so really mitigating key risks um, the utilization of big data initiatives will you know help firms normalize the the underlying data sets and we're hearing quite a lot about enterprise data management technologies and pro projects underway with a lot of the asset management um, firms um, that'll help also drive efficiencies in a number of process-driven workflows and free up compliance time to actually be able to work on more value-added tasks across the organization. Now with that, obviously, the achieving economies of scale, heightening the transparency within the organization will enable the compliance team to obviously have and provide better internal reporting to senior management, um, but also have better and clearer um, communications with the regulators. Thanks, Mark. Uh, appreciate those insights. Um, you know, I find it you know, pretty interesting. Uh, you know, you mentioned a lot of focus on enterprise data management and the technology that's being used as the underpinnings of that. You know, I'm sure a lot of the, the firms that are listening in right now are, are considering something like that or actively, you know, in a project um, to kind of harmonize all their data. You know, one of the most interesting things that I've kind of observed over the last few years, um, you know, in really partnering with clients within the capital markets is just the evolution of the chief data officer in general. You know, there was no concept of a CDO um, up until a few years ago. And, and, I, and I think that really aligns with just the focus um, that firms are putting forth in terms of integrating their data, you know, normalizing and harmonizing their disparate data sources to be able to leverage that data for, for different purposes. Um, but most importantly, you know, one of the cores is just accuracy and measurable data that can be brought in to assist in the decision-making process and evaluation of you know, certain criterias. And any good compliance practitioner knows that garbage in, garbage out from that perspective, as the old adage goes. And I think a, a lot of us that have been in the space for quite some time know the challenges of validation of a compliance exception and, and what that really entails. You know, a lot of that goes into the investigation. And, and when we say investigation, it's, it's typically mining through a lot of disparate data sources in a manual fashion more often than not versus using the analytical skills that all of us 
you know, look to obviously bring to the table, you know, as sound compliance professionals. Um, so I thought it'd be helpful just to kind of break down some of the, the things that are being used for data um, integration and, and really looking at one of the most popular ones or things that you know, Mark and myself hear a lot from clients in general. Um, and it kind of goes back to, you know, one of the points that Mark raised earlier, which is you know, making compliance a competitive advantage. I think that's further being scrutinized in due diligence efforts and, and requests um, for business, you know, more than ever. And so, you know, one of the things that we've really seen an uptick and focus on is KPIs and, and key performance indicators as measures of past success and predictive, you know, for future growth within the firm. Um, and, and some of them just kind of go into, you know, you know how things will be ranked or processed um, how clients are looking at their measures uh, against their peers. So a lot of peer analysis focus, uh, but also alignment with what regulatory expectations are. Um, and obviously there's a lot of ways to look at data in those intersection points. And I think the challenge is, is that the scrutinization of data is at an all time high. Um, and, and part of that's probably been predicated by um, you know, what I have here, which is a marketing facade of, of compliance, you know, where if the substance beneath that isn't, you know, warranted or it can be forensically analyzed and digested, um, you know, really there's potential for pulling the wool over some, pull over the, pulling the wool over someone's eyes from that perspective. So we've listed out a few examples, I'm sure, you know, and I'd love to hear thoughts, you know, in, in the Q and A um, from others of things that they're looking to bring to the table of how they're measuring their key performance indicators. But you know, some of the, the popular ones that we see are just you know, measuring employee success, whether that be through attestations or completeness or adherence to training, um, you know, looking at uh, the business, the core business, whether that's you know, looking at that through the intersection of trade errors or um, you know, through compliance, you know, validation of performance on a regulatory exam or an in internal audit um, process, you know, and looking at that over time horizon, um, you know, really helps clients look at that dichotomy and dissect that appropriately. Um, I've been working specifically with a lot of clients to kind of break down their compliance program into the categories that relate to their firm um, that are basically the byproducts of their controls and their risks, and then looking at you know, performance from a testing perspective on those. And some of that blends into a risk assessment process, but others are just good quality training measures and oversight measures from a governance perspective to ensure that you have a good sound program in place. So Mark and I put this slide together to kind of just give everyone a flavor for how integrated data, you know, really starts to take shape within, you know, a, a global business in the capital markets. and. You know, these are by no means an all-encompassing list. Um, you know, these are just some of what we think are the, the hot topics right now, to be candid, um, that, that firms are, are looking at to try and either automate to create efficiencies and scale within the firm, uh, potentially do more with less, you know, and, and why technology is really the core foundation within that. Um, so as you kind of go through each of these bubbles, you know, what we're, we're really trying to represent here is, your compl chief compliance officer, you know, who needs to have integrated data across all of these different lenses to really be able to fully see the full enterprise of the organization for what it is. And, you know, as I'm sure most of you know, the dependency on data and sound data that's, you know, been sanitized, um, can be validated and then processed in an automated fashion you know, really is the underpinnings of having a scalable um, oversight and, and governance and risk program um, to be able to really flow into a next generation technology. Um, obviously, Mark touched upon you know, market abuse and trade surveillance. I think you know, the underpinnings there, especially with some of the other elements that are required as part of a, an investigation are some things that we, you know, specifically at ACA, have seen a lot of deficiencies from regulators around. Um, there's been obviously some enforcement actions and some calls to action from the regulators themselves. And we're, we're working very closely with a lot of clients to really help to you know, optimize that process um, 
everyone's challenged with shareholder disclosure uh, these days you know, and the amount of data that's required and some of the obscure data on a per jurisdiction basis. So the uniqueness within those and the challenges that each jurisdiction presents from that perspective. And then obviously we're seeing a ton of focus on AML, KYC um, and ESG in spe specifically. And you know, ESG basically is at its heart, you know, a, a structure of data that, you know, is going to be able to provide risk data, um, you know, ranking data, and then allow clients to you know, really streamline that process for how they're validating, you know, their, their policies and their SMAs from that perspective, but also, you know, how they're marketing um, that material to, um, you know, the, the end users or the, um, the end client, uh, whether it be from a retailer or an institutional perspective. And, and so we, we definitely see a lot of focus there. You know, one of the things that I, I tend to be on the forefront of looking out for is standardization of some of these areas. I think some of these are moving targets to a greater extent. And so we're definitely working with, um, you know, closely with our, our regulatory consultants to track regs um, and the industry agents that, you know, are behind, you know, a lot of the standardization processes, whether it be the CFA Institute in the US, um, for example. So when we bring all this data and this ecosystem together, and I think you know Mark and I agreed when we were putting the slide together, we could probably spend an hour just specifically honing in on this. Uh, but you know, obviously, with the interest of time, um, you know, how how does this then per perpetuate you know forward-looking progress within a firm? And so when we think about unifying your data and, and then leveraging that as part of you know the next generation of technology, you know, one of the things that always strikes me is and when I, when I think about emerging technology, um, I tend to see kind of two spectrums of people. You know, on the one end, you know, we have very progressive firms that we work with that are already well on their way down the path of either introducing or have successfully implemented elements of robotic process automation for bots within their organization, uh, elements of machine learning, you know, which some of our technology that we work with at ACA has today, um, elements of natural language processing. So bringing that all together from a surveillance perspective. Um, and those are some of the, the key areas where without sound data that's being governed and measured well and being you know, processed in an effective manner, um, through integration methodologies, you know, none of these can really work. So, you know, a big core dependency on leveraging AI in general is having the right data architecture in place, you know, from the first point of, you know, kind of introducing that technology. Um, other hotspots or risk identifications are just, you know, thinking of like anomalous activities or behavioral analytics or behavioral pattern changes. Uh, statistical inconsistencies or anomalies with respect to that, you know, thinking about uh, a, a permutation of standard deviations and, um, you know, really big, taking a calculated risk approach from, from that perspective. And then looking at how the client can actually leverage that. And, you know, one of the things that we know uh, that a lot of clients are yearning for is more firm-wide transparency and the ability to disseminate that information through management reporting um, and overall just the sound oversight and governance practice um, are some of the things that we are working with clients on and, and we see the industry really focusing on as a whole, uh, as a pain point, as a challenge, and as a mission critical objective um, for their future. I think we have one question that came in, um, which is how to match delivery and earn schedule with scope and risk management? And I think that, that's, a, that's a fair question. It's a good question. I think it's a question that a lot of clients wrestle with. Um, and from that perspective, I think when you look at the governance practice of bringing in something like this, in, this concept into your firm, there's multiple key stakeholders that need to be involved. Um, data stewardship, you know, needs to have a seat at the table for one. Um, your governance team, you know, relative to how you're going to look at your overall introduction of technology and, and data integration, how that's going to be governed, how that's going to be measured, um, how it's going to be reviewed probably as well. So when I talk to a lot of um, clients about how they're adopting um, this technology, a lot of the focus tends to be on the internal controls around that. And there's two lenses to look through there. There's ensuring that you have a successful delivery and, and, and a comprehensive rollout of, of 
your project. And that's measured through good sound project management, um, data requirements, you know, and, and overall um, project delivery execution. Um, but the ongoing part of that is how we look at this technology or this data through that lens from an ongoing perspective. And the thing that I find successful clients really get right is treating this as part of their internal audit, you know, across the three lines of their defense in general, and bringing that into scope as part of their annual review process from a compliance perspective. Um, and and in, in some cases, you know, as we get into progressive emerging technology, you know, I, I have some clients, for instance, that have introduced RPA, and they're basically treating the bot as an employee. So it's going through a lot of the validation checks that any employee would go through from that perspective. And I think on a continuous surveillance basis, that's critical to kind of map out ahead of actually going live with said technology or, you know, data, um, you know, new data implementations and delivery. Well, I know we went a few minutes over and I think we could have spent a lot more time on this, but appreciate the, the great Q&A question. Um, if there's obviously any other questions or if folks want to kind of drill down and explore some of these concepts further, you know, Mark and I would be happy to um, you know, connect with you guys either through our booth or, or offline um, from that perspective. Uh, you can reach us by either of the contact details that you see here. Um, and we appreciate the opportunity to, to have this discussion with this forum um, and uh, look forward to the rest of the conference. Thank you very much. Thanks everybody. so much.